All right, now we're going to do one more um, wax seal stamp in brass. This one's for me. Um, and so Cameron has a setup over here. And honey, do you want to talk about what you've got going on and why? Um, sure. These are the these are the same settings that we used when we did the last wax seal. Um, so we're using a speed of a thousand millimeters a second, ninety five percent max power, uh, seventy five kilohertz, and uh, two hundred nanoseconds. Um, and I'm doing twenty four passes. I think we actually need about fifty, but we're gonna do twenty four. See how deep it is, and then decide how many more we want to do after that. So um, that's where we're gonna start. Okay, and that little diamond plaid shape there is for the crosshatch, right? Yep. So that's how you're going to go at it? Yep. Okay, and how long do you think this is going to take? Uh, about 45 minutes total. Okay. All right, so should we start it and let us see, and then I'll come back. This is a really fun design, you guys. I'm so excited about it. My friend Andrea, who got her stamps, loves it. Oh, this is louder. What? What happened? Okay. I can smell it. All right. You can see how much crazier this is compared to the stainless. I'm getting out of here because I can smell it. So we'll come back when we're doing cleanup, but you can at least see a little bit of what the design is going to be like. Okay, this is at 24 passes, about 15 minutes in. There's no cleanup here yet, obviously. Um, and it's 0.6 millimeters of depth, and we think we need more than that. So how many more passes do you think we're going to do here? Um, probably... I'm wondering if 1.1, 1.2 would suffice. Okay. All right. So that's where we are at this point. Okay. We're at 1.2 millimeters of depth, and I'm thinking that's going to be enough. We'll see. Um, you know, if not, we can always order another part, but I'm curious to see at this depth if, you know, we get good resolution. And Cameron's about to do the cleanup pass. So it's, you know, you can see that it's very sooty and lots of metal is removed. So whenever you're ready, honey. That really does work. I mean, it's still going to need to be cleaned, but yeah, it helps a lot. Yeah, it helps a lot. And this thing is hot like crazy. You definitely don't want to touch it. Okay, so the cleanup pass is done, and now we've got to manually clean it up. So it looks pretty. Okay, Cameron's going to take it out. We'll show you how he does this. I don't know if you're interested, but we'll at least show you. Forceps. sticks to the tape a little bit because it yeah. gets hot. Yeah. And that's cold water in there. Probably be lucky not to have the glass explode, huh? It's not that hot. No? I mean, it's, it's hot, probably hot enough to burn you when you first pull it out, but now it's just lightly warm. All right, look at that pretty leopard. So here's a lovely view of our trash can. 
but I thought I would show you what he does to clean this up. So that's a Dremel, and what, what do you have on that? One uh, it's just a stainless steel wire brush. Oh. So is that smoothing it out, or? Uh, it's helping to uh, smooth out the the edges. So like there's a very sharp kind of edge there when after the laser's done. So it's just kind of smoothing that out a little bit, and it's cleaning off you know any soot residue that's left. So there you go. Very nice. Okay. He found a few more spots, and did you say you might wet sand it? Yeah, I might do a little wet sanding, um, just to also polish it up a little bit. You're not really over the trash can anymore. Yeah. Okay, so... Just some 400 grit uh, wet, wet the dry sandpaper. And so is that just further smoothing everything out so there's no burrs or? Yeah. Did you do that to Andrea's? Yes. And you could even go a little bit finer grit and polish it even more, but I thought she was pretty thin. It looks pretty nice. All right, I can't wait to make a stamp. I'm gonna head upstairs to do that now. Okay, I'm upstairs at my pressing station in one of my sewing rooms and I'm experimenting with these wax seals. Now, I don't know if you remember, you probably don't, but we went a little bit deeper on Andrea's and we wanted to see if a little bit shallower would work or not with these uh, brass stamps. So I was experimenting with the amount of wax to put on, that one didn't work out because I didn't have enough wax on it. This one was, eh, you know, a medium amount of wax, but I think that this was really a little bit more ideal in terms of the amount of wax. Um, my glue gun that I'm using for this pink wax, I think it got the wax too hard. You can see the boiling bubbles and it was actually sizzling coming out. Um, so it's gonna probably take a little practice for me, but I like it. I think that we'll do another one at the uh, depth that Andrea's were at, uh, both of hers. This is 1.2. Hers, are, I think, are 1.6 and 1.8. I find that the release on this is a little tough. I don't know whether it's the wax, um, but the, the stamp itself is really hot, blazing hot from the wax. So, I'm wondering if the wax isn't also a little too hot um, and maybe it spreads a little too much because I see uh, the opacity on this pink coming through here is, is not the greatest. Um, not that anybody's gonna keep this seal, but anyway, that's what I've got. Um, I did this one, this was like a lot of wax, probably too much and really had a tough time getting that to release. And I did um, another, another wax company. I obviously didn't have enough down and I tried to use this little um, form here and the circumference or diameter, both of my, um, of the brass stamp that I have is too big for the form. 
so that it doesn't, you know, get down in there. So um, we would need a different size of stamp, I think, for that. So anyway, that's what we have. Um, I just, I love this design and can't wait to get a few more stamps in.